the low of the lowest of the lowest. So with the lowest of the lowest of the lowest is what an unbelieving woman is. And the Muslim says, I'm lying. I literally just read it from their book. So my next topic... What's the next topic, Bob? The next topic yeah. is to talk about whether the Quran is a hate book. Ah, Quran, hate. Whether it preaches hatred towards Jews and Christians. Now, I want to state that I don't believe in, nor do I support anyone who speaks hatred against Muslims. This is not what this is about. Some Muslims are wonderful people. Some Muslims are d Some Muslims are criminals. Some Muslims are just like me. They're about a good mixture of both. Neither being too good nor too bad. That's the truth. But Islam as an ideology and a narrative. Are you ready with the first one? It's, on, it's written there for you. If it's written there, you know what it is. So. The Quran and Islam teaches hate towards Christians and Jews. Let me start to prove that for you. Which one is it? 3326. 3326. It says, and those of the people of the book who aided them, Allah did take them down from their strongholds and cast terror into their hearts, so that some ye slew and some ye made prisoners. Next one, please. That's talking about Christians and Jews and the Quran is saying, and it is praising as praiseworthy violence against Christians and Jews. Are you ready? When you're ready with the next one, let me know. Imagine for a second, if we started quoting some of the medieval writers of the church, that talked about in the time of the Crusades started talking about violence against Muslims. Wouldn't they get, wouldn't we be accused of Islamophobia? Well, this is coming from their religious book. Their religious book is preaching hatred against Christians and Jews. Surah 60, 13. Surah 60, 13. Surah 60, 13. It reads, Bob? Ye who believe, turn not for friendship to people on whom is the wrath of Allah. Who's, who's of the hereafter, they are already in despair, just as the unbelievers are in despair about those buried in the graves. Turn not in friendship. Imagine if I said, don't become friends with the Muslims. If I said this on camera, yeah. the Muslims would rightly, rightly accuse, you of? accuse me of Islamophobia. <laughs> and I say, if you meet a cultural Muslim yeah. who's not interested in political Islam yeah. and he doesn't want to impose Islam on the world, it's fine to be his friend. We have to oppose the Islamists. Yeah. But the Quran is saying, say? turn not in friendship to Christians and Jews. In verses 6 it reads, say, Bob? those who reject the truth among the people of the book, ah, the among the polytheists, ah, right. will be hellfire to dwell therein, for they are the worst of creatures. The worst of creatures. Ah, Imagine yeah, yeah. If the BNP <laughs> produced a leaflet yeah. that said Muslims were the worst kind of people, yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone would rightly be outraged and, say, and accuse them of Islamophobia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the Quran yeah. is calling Jews and Christians the, the worst of creatures. Of creatures. How is that not Christophobia? Coming from the Quran. Surah 2, 221. Surah 2, 221 reads this. Do not marry unbelievers, unbelieving women until they believe. 
a slave woman who believes is better than an unbelieving woman. Now you've got to understand the socio-cultural matrix of slavery to understand what bigotry I just read to you. The slaves were the lowest of the low in the slave trading communities. And the Quran has just said that an bel- unbelieving woman is worse than a slave. Worse than a believing slave. So the lowest of the lowest of the lowest is what an unbelieving woman is. And the Muslim says, I'm lying. I literally just read it from their book. No, this surah goes on to say, I'm still reading, don't encourage him. Even though she allure you, nor marry your girls to unbelievers until they believe. A man slave who believes is better than an unbeliever. There you go, he's just called his Quran a liar. He's just called a Quran a liar. Our translation is different. You translate as you like, but not as I will like. This is the truth of the Arabic grammar. Will you stay with the camera? So, we got up to this passage in the Quran where it said, Do not marry unbelieving women until they believe. A slave woman who believes is better than an unbelieving woman. So, the, the women who don't believe in Islam are called the lowest of the low. It goes on to say, Even though she allure you, nor marry your girls to unbelievers until they believe. A man slave who believes is better than an unbeliever. Although he allure you, unbelievers do but beckon you to the fire, but Allah beckons you by his grace to the gardens of bliss and forgiveness and makes his sign clear to mankind that they may receive admonition. Sorry, I'm talking, I'm talking here. So the reality is that the Quran is saying that unbelievers are worse than slaves. Now in a world in which the slaves were the lowest of the low, it's saying that unbelievers are worse than that. How is that not hatred? How this, think about that. We sit in a Christian worldview in which we believe that all human beings have equal dignity. The Quran does not share that worldview. The Quran sits in a worldview in which some people are better than others. And if you are a slave Muslim, you're better than any unbeliever. And this is the reason for so much economic prejudice against Christians in Muslim lands. In Surah 5, 33, it says this. And imagine, ladies and gentlemen, if the BNP received, issued a, a, a pamphlet that said that uh, Muslims were worse than, I don't know, paedophiles, who in our society are considered the lowest of the low. If they said that, how would the world respond? And yet this kind of prejudice is coming from this book. It says in Surah 5, 33, the punishment of those who wage war against Allah and against his messenger and strive with might and main for mischief through the land is execution or crucifixion or the cutting off of hands and feet from opposite sides or exile from the land. That is the punishment that will be inflicted upon Christians and Jews in a Sharia system. But imagine if we passed a law saying that if a Muslim commits a crime, we're going to kick them out of the country. Their religion is saying that one of the punishments for committing a crime is that you can be kicked out of the country. The British, uh, if the British state were to do that, as it has tried to do with Shamima Begum, the progressives would be in uproar. So why aren't you up in uproar about what this Quran says? In Surah 5, 
Aya 14, it says the following. From those two who call themselves Christian, we did take a covenant, but they forgot a good part of the message that was sent to them, so we estranged them with enmity and hatred between the one and the other to the day of judgment, and soon Allah will show them what, is, what it is they have done. So because of the way that Allah views the Jews and the Christians, you begin to see why Muslims support these kinds of punishments and these kinds of attitudes against Jews and Christians, because they're reflecting their attitude of their God. Perfect. In Surah 5, Ayah 60, it says the following. There's a passage in the Quran, I know it exists, where it talks about non-Muslims as pigs and apes. So let's see if we can just find that. It says in Pictol's translation, in Surah 5, Ayah 60, it says, Shall I tell thee of the worse case than theirs for retribution with Allah? Worse is the case of him whom Allah hath cursed, him on whom his wrath hath fallen, and of whose sort Allah hath turned some to apes and swine, and who serveth idols, such are in worse plight and further astray from the plain road. In Yusuf Ali's translation, it reads, Shall I point out to you something much worse than this, as judged by the treatment it received from Allah, those who incurred the curse of Allah and his wrath, those of whom some he transformed into apes and swine. So what you've got there is the fact that some translations are trying to hide this insult. But in Surah 5, Ayah 60, it refers to Christians and Jews as pigs and swine. Now, if anyone were to produce a pamphlet saying that because Muslims were not believers in the Christian faith, they were pigs and swine, that would be immediately condemned by the progressives. And yet that is exactly what this Quran is doing. It is calling Christians pigs and swine. So why is that not Christophobia? Why is that not hatred? Why is that not a hate crime? You see, what we've got in our society are double standards. In Surah 9, Ayah 23, it reads the following. And also, that just points out how deceptive some translators feel that they can be with the translation. Because they don't see it as the Quran, they feel at liberty to play fast and loose with the words that it teaches. So here's what it says in Surah 923. And this is the contradiction to everything Ali Dawa just said in our interruption. Fight those who believe not in Allah nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge the religion of truth from among the people of the book until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. So the Quran is teaching that Muslims should fight against the Christians and the Jews because they don't believe in the religion of truth until they feel themselves subdued and pay with willing submission the jizya. That's what the Quran says. If anyone was to produce a political pamphlet saying what the Quran says, it would be condemned as Islamophobia. So why is this not Christophobia? Why is this not a hate book? Why is its teachings not framed as you would frame them if anyone else said them about any other belief system? In Surah 22, 19 to 20, it says the following. It says, these two antagonists dispute with each other about their Lord, but those who deny their Lord, for them will be cut out a garment of fire, 
over their heads will be poured out boiling water. With it will be scalded what is within their bodies. It is this kind of judgment that legitimates the other kinds of verses in the Quran. And that is why for 1400 years we Christians have been persecuted by Muslim societies and we are continuously persecuted today. And the liberal progressives, because of the blind spot in their ideology, are unwilling to see it for what it is. So what we have is a very clear case that the Quran teaches hatred against Christians and Jews. Now, I want to be clear, not every Muslim buys into what the Quran says. There are many Muslims that would not act upon what the Quran says. But there are millions of Muslims that do. And those millions of Muslims make the life of Christians in Pakistan, Egypt, Arabia, Iran, Sudan, Nigeria, Bangladesh, Afghanistan miserable, dangerous and full of risks and problems. And until we call it out and see for it for what it is and where it's really coming from, it will never stop. Christians will continue to be persecuted and it is time that we call it what it is and we stand up against it.